Hello, hello everyone. It's Lisa Finkel coming to you from Finkel Pottery um, in Prince Edward Island, Canada, on the east coast of Canada. So today I've got another kiln unloading for you. Um, I'm hoping I can remember most of my glaze combos to share with you guys. A few I pulled out, I'm terrible to take notes. And I was like, oops, <laughs> I'm not quite sure what I did there, but we'll see. Um, this was all white stoneware. Uh, I think it was all Tucker's white stoneware. And it fired, I used the Camille Hoffman schedule and it fired to um, almost a six. Uh, I, I bumped my top temperature up from uh, 2180 to 2185, just trying to get a little more drippage. And I didn't want to go too, too crazy because then you end up getting too much drippage. So um, I tried 2185, which worked pretty good actually. I might keep it around there for a while. Um, so anyway, let's just dive in. So starting with, I did some mini vases. Um, I mentioned in some other videos, I'm getting ready for an Easter market, which is March 23rd. So trying to pump, y'all know you kind of try to build up some momentum <laughs> with stuff as you're getting close to a sale. And I try to have a few items that are not super expensive. So um, the mini vases are a great option for people. So this is done in um, Spectrum um, Soft Red. With, and most of these pieces, unless I say otherwise, just have my studio white liner in them. Or actually, no, that's not, no, I lie. Actually, most of these pieces um, have my studio clear in them because it's actually a cheaper glaze to make. And I am fine with it on white stoneware. Some people want the pure white and that's fine. Um, but in my case, I was quite happy to use the clear. So that's a personal preference. So here's another little mini vase that I did in the soft red. So that's that one. Then I did a mini vase in uh, Sangria, Spectrum Sangria. And this was, um, I did a little dip in Alabaster, then I dipped it up to here in uh, Norse Blue, and then I put a little flux on the top. That's another little mini vase. That's that. This one I am so happy with. I think this is quite cool. So what did I do here? This is Studio Clear. This is um, two coats of Honey Flux, one coat of River Birch, the whole thing. Then I just put globbies of raspberry mist and spectrum cactus and uh, pottery supply house purple haze. So that's how that turned out. Check this out. Love, love, love. So this, this one was, um, I dipped it in alabaster first and then I put a thick coat of raspberry mist over the alabaster, then dipped it in uh, Norse blue, then um, some honey flux, or sorry, light flux on the rim. So I'm very pleased with how that turned out. So I did two of those. So there's one, and then here's the other one. So that just, so so happy with that look at the drip on the handle isn't that pretty yeah so really happy with that one okay this one a little carved mug uh pei girl uh i know i've explained it before but we live in an island called prince Edward island which we call pei it's a short form so pei girl is just people who associate with living here and um so this is a carved mug and I did the whole thing in kimchi, spectrum kimchi. And then I did, um, I think two coats of sangria over the rim. Check out the color variation I'm getting with the kimchi there. Isn't that pretty? The blue and the pink, it's lovely. Turned out nice, happy with that one. Um, this is a regional saying that is very popular here. It's called, we call it very best. So the bottom of this is dipped in um, Tamuku Gold, my studio Tamuku Gold, uh, which 
once I run out of this, I probably will not make the same one again because it's got lithium in it. And I don't even think you can get lithium anymore. If you can, it's not in my budget. So um, I'm going to enjoy it while I have it. Uh, so um, Tamuco Gold, then a dip in um, Power Turquoise, and then a band, two coats of seaweed on the rim. And this is just a local saying. It means all is well in the world. Things are very best. This one is Tamuco Gold on the bottom. Um, and then it was a dip in black, My Studio Black, and then a dip on the rim of um, Power Turquoise. So that turned out nice. And then I've got these glasses. I made a set of four of these, these drinking glasses. So it's the uh, the inside, it's the only, I have two mugs and four glasses and this, they're the only ones that I did a different colored liner. And this is just Norse blue. And then, um, it is dipped in alabaster because I have alabaster to dip and then one coat of winter wood over the top and then a band of light flux. So I did four of those. Um, they're all pretty similar, but you know, sometimes people want a set. So you try to make sure that you've got that available for them. That's what we use in my house, and I'm sure many of you do too, is pottery glasses, and they're so lovely to drink out of. So this is a mug with a couple of finger dimples at the bottom um, in this shape. I've been playing with this shape a lot. And then blue inside. So they match the glasses. And I'm sure lots of you have figured out by now that when you have a wider bottom and you bell it, um, these mugs hold a deceiving amount of money, uh, money <laughs> coffee or tea, um, probably about 15 ounces. So now this one I love, 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 but um, this is my Studio Pikes Purple on the bottom and it's a tiny bit matte and it's, it's typically smoother than this. It's more like this normally. And I think um, I either didn't stir it enough or I didn't dip it long enough and both I did two pieces in it and both pieces are the same. It, usually it's this luscious purpley goodness, um, but this is still fine. Um, I don't know if I want to refire this. I'm a little worried about what, well, I might, I guess I have some room here. It's a pretty stable glaze. It doesn't tend to run. You can see that. So I could probably try a refire, add a little bit more Pike's Purple and see what happens. But anyway, regardless, I do love this color combo. So this is Pike's Purple on the bottom applied on a slant. Then I did um, not overlapping, but close uh, Spectrum Soft Aqua. Then I did where it didn't overlap, but uh, overlapping a tiny bit the Aqua and the Purple. I don't know if I'm explaining this very well. Um, a couple of coats of River Birch. And then I dipped um, Power Turquoise on the top, Laguna Power Turquoise on the top. Look at that, look at that color. That turned out so cool. I'm gonna be doing that again, but being more careful with my purple next time. Um, these are a full dip in Norse blue and they're just my little cloud mugs. Um, so I just dip the whole thing then I wipe back and then put the little faces on. And this is just um, Mako Design Aligner. I think it's Mako that does that. And then just um, Mako Coral, which is the base for Amaryllis, little blobs of that. It makes a really nice, soft, subtle pink. So I did two of those in the Norse Blue. This is a refire. And, you know, sometimes with three fires, you can't really remember what you did the first time. But, um, obviously, it's winter wood. And I think initially, I had a purple uh, rim and then blue hydrangea over that. And I can't remember which purple I used. I have a bunch of different purples. But it didn't, it was kind of bumpy and it didn't drip. So, I added some flux to the rim and refired and that turned out much better. So, happy with that now. That looks much, much better. Here's a little leaf tray. I 
turned out pretty. So this leaf tray, I started with um, iron wash and I, I put it in the, um, the veins and then I wiped it back. But I might have wiped it back too much. I'm not sure if the iron wash is still existing there or if that's just um, the rainforest pooling because it's Amico Rainforest. Anyway, so, you know, probably three good coats of Amico Rainforest all over. And then um, root beer, two coats I think I did of um, Kaidi root beer on the rim at the back. And then I did a rim of uh, seaweed, Amico seaweed, and then a little rim of the root beer on the rim. And that turned out very pretty, very, very pretty. Okay, I also made some pillar candle holders. Um, and I did, they're all pretty similar, but slight variations. So I did six of them. So two of them, and they're all winter wood as the base, which is the dip in alabaster, or coil winter wood. Um, and then these, after I did the, the winter wood, I just did a dip in Norse blue. And then the pillar sits in the middle and I'll sell them with a pillar in them. That's that. And then I did just the straight winter wood. Simple, simple. And then I did the winter wood with the light flux. And I didn't go too crazy on the light flux because you can see these are really low, right? So um, you do not want that running off the pot. Uh, next, I love this bowl. It's really bright and cheery. Uh, definitely a pink lover's bowl. <laughs> so um, here it is. And it's got sangria on the back. I didn't wipe off my glaze very well there. I'm going to have to grind that off. But um, So I did sangria on the back. Um, no, sorry. Before I did anything, I put a good two coats on the rim of Spectrum Twilight. So if you don't have Spectrum Twilight, it is a fun glaze to play with. With Spectrum glazes, you get a really nice um, effect. Uh, so Spectrum Twilight, then I did, um, oh, and then I did three coats of uh, kimchi over to, to the rim. Then I did three coats well, two actually coats of sangria on the bottom of the bowl, but then a third coat here because I didn't want it to run right off. And sometimes with spectrum glazes, you just don't know. So then inside, I did a rim, two coats of sangria. And look at what that twilight's doing. Can you see that? It's so pretty. And the kimchi, I love how when you use it, it, when it pulls deep, you get these blue tones. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's a nice bowl. Um, this one is a variation on my PEI Girl Mug, which I just showed you. So this is Nova Scotia Girl. Nova Scotia is just the province right next door to us. I lived there for 10 years uh, in Halifax. Um, so this has sangria all over, probably three coats, and then um, kimchi on the rim. And that turned out really pretty. And just the clear inside. Here is the other version of Pike's Purple. So you can see once again, it's, but I mean, it's fine. This one is probably better because you can't really notice um, the thickness, but this is, I might actually refire this one too. We'll see. You know, it's always a great to, to debate to refire or not to refire. And then it was dipped. So dipped in Pike's Purple, then dipped in Studio Black. And then this was a Red F Designs, Amanda Grantstum's. Um, I saw this on one of her videos and it's really hard to see this. And next time I'm going to go a lot more crazy with it because check out the purple in there and it's matching the pikes perfectly. Um, and that you get that from putting, um, spectrum reactive red on black and it turns purple and it's really, 
really pretty. So next time I'm gonna, and I, I might even refire and add more reactive red to it just to see what happens, but um, that is gorgeous. Nice. Great possibilities, I guess. Okay, this one. This one is a Spectrum uh, Cactus, three coats. Uh, Spectrum Autumn Purple, three coats. And this is where I forget something. I know I put a little something <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> totally gone from my head. I was having a great time. I was just slapping on glazes, not worrying too much about it. So anyway, but even without that middle piece, I think the, um, it might be the Twilight actually. Yeah, it could be the Twilight the Spectrum Twilight, um, but yeah, purple and green, I like it, turns out nice. I threw another set, so I, I did a total of eight drinking glasses in this load, so these turned out quite pretty. So these I dip in my Studio Green, then in my Studio Blue, just clear inside, and then I did a coat of, um, Olive float. Uh, actually, blobs of olive float. Sorry, not a coat. Blobs. And then blobs of um, light flux. So I did four of those, and they turned out. Two of them turned out beautiful. Two of them curled. My blue might be getting a little thick. I'm going to have to look at that. Um, so I've got some curling on the rim. Now, it's really close to the bottom. So refiring will be risky, but I think I'm going to have to because I can't sell it like that. So I'll just put it on um, a cookie and on a, oh God, the word's escaping me, but I'll lift it up so that if it drips, it's not going to, I have advancer shelves, so it's not going to wreck the shelf anyway, but you don't really want to abuse the shelves either. This one has a very small bit of crawling here. This one dripped even closer, so I'm not sure if I want to risk refiring it. We'll have to see. Anyway, uh, this one, I'm going to be adding um, a overglazed decal to it. I think I have some other ones on order, so I have an idea for this one. So this one is very pretty. So um, on the bottom, it is two, two coats of um, honey flux, one coat of river birch, then on the top, I did like a little swoopy band of reactive red. Then below that, slightly overlapping, a swoopy band of um, uh, soft red. And then overlap, and the soft red overlap the, the um, honey flux. So what you can see, when, when soft red hits that uh, honey flux, it goes white. So you get, it's nice to get an ombre effect. If you like ombre effects, it's a really cool way to get an ombre effect because it goes white to light pink to dark pink. So that turned out pretty. And I think with the, the overglazed deco on it, it'll look nice. Um, this one is Kapow color. So it is uh, Coyote Fairy Rose on the top, um, Spectrum Cactus on the bottom, and then Spectrum um, Curry in the middle. So it didn't drip quite as much as I thought it would. So potentially I could refire with a little bit of either pearl white or light flux. We'll see. To be decided. Um, then this was kind of funny. I had a plan for these vases and I'm sure you all do this sometimes. So the plan was, um, the bottom part is perfect, so it was uh, two coats of honey flux, one coat of river birch, two about here. Then I did two coats of um, obsidian, amico obsidian, there. Then I was going to do blobs of blue hydrangea because I like the gold flex, but I did not. I did blobs of olive float on all three and blobs of seaweed and then some uh, flux on the rim and they turned out fine. I just wasn't sure about how the um, olive float would turn out on the black, but it's fine. It turned out great. It looks pretty. So crisis averted. Now I did it for all three. 
and it did turn out more black than it would normally um, when I do that treatment, but it's fine. It's still pretty. All good. And these are going to get some overglazed decals on them. Um, I don't know if I showed you this one. Yeah, this one. I must have bypassed this one. So this one is, um, was originally, it's a refire. So originally Twilight on the bottom, Spectrum Twilight. Then it was um, a dip in alabaster and um, raspberry mist. But nothing moved. It was kind of, ugh. so um, I put um, flux on the rim and the refire. And then I dipped it in um, fire brick red over the flux. So I got a lot more movement. I'm happier with it. I mean, it's still not my favorite. I would have wanted more color at the top, but um, I'm certainly not going to refire it again. And I, I like it a lot better than I liked it before. So that one's good. Um, and then the last is just some little pendants. So this one is, uh, I have a bunch more to make, but I did three to start because I got the little uh, rods from... Um, Sambao for uh, to hang things on and I didn't want to go too crazy until I tried them once to see but it stayed really straight so and I didn't go crazy on how much I put on I didn't want to weigh them down I've seen some sad stories on kiln openings on those so I just did three on one rod and I have a bunch of the rods so this one is purple haze pottery supply house purple haze this little heart is sangria and I just will put them on some leather thongs and then this one was kimchi. It turned a little beigey. I probably didn't go quite thick enough on that. But anyway, so that's it for the kiln unload for this time. I have a bisque kiln going as we speak. Probably hoping to get two more kiln loads done before the sale on March 23rd. So I'll pop back on next time I have something to show you guys. Thanks for watching. If you appreciate it, please like and subscribe. It really does help. And I'll see you next time.